First, was it right for the United States to withdraw and do so in the way that they did? Look, uh, Pakistan's always been talking about a responsible withdrawal from Afghanistan, which essentially meant a political settlement before the withdrawal. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a sovereign decision. I think President Biden was right in saying that even five more years wouldn't have changed the dynamic because there was a structural problem. The world was trying to find a military solution where there was only a political one. And the only country that kept saying that there need to be serious talks in a political, uh, a negotiated settlement uh, was Pakistan. You know, you've got to understand that Pakistan's vantage point is completely different from the rest of the world. We have suffered for four decades. People talk about Afghanistan and the international presence. Uh, I have to tell you, Pakistan for four decades has, had, um, uh, has suffered uh, from the war in Afghanistan. 80,000 plus casualties since 9-11. $152 billion uh, losses in the economy and over 2 million internally displaced people for a war that we had nothing to do with next door. 9-11 happened. The military campaign in Afghanistan sent over these people over the border, uh, uninvited, and then Pakistan had to fight them. And Pakistan fought them valiantly, but the point is, Another crisis in Afghanistan, if you again move towards a humanitarian crisis, if the world again abandons Afghanistan like uh, the world did in the 90s, uh, it was a disaster for everybody, but first of all for Pakistan, given that we are the neighbor uh, of a landlocked country uh, from where refugees have flown, and over 3 million refugees, close to 4 million actually, reside in Pakistan even today. So think about it. When, when people talk about, oh, there is a withdrawal, there's going to be another humanitarian crisis, and the region should deal with it, it's Pakistan. And it's very unfair for the world to think that everybody would again turn their back on Afghanistan, and Pakistan would be left to deal with the mess. And so we've been arguing again and again that the world needs to engage with Afghanistan for the sake of the average Afghan. If Afghanistan is abandoned, you know, President George Bush, uh, Secretary Clinton, they're on record saying that that was a mistake that the U.S. will never make again. Afghans are asking this question, is the world heading there again? Is the world going to abandon the average Afghan, leave a security vacuum, leave a humanitarian crisis, uh, which then does not have good outcomes for the region, but also for the West? So, Muid, what role will Pakistan play in this? Because it has been said that Pakistan's policy since 9-11 has been a confusing mix of both sheltering, supporting, harboring the Taliban and al-Qaeda, while also supporting US efforts to push back on those groups. So where does Pakistan stand? Will you support the Taliban now? First of all, it's preposterous for those who say this. Uh, it almost sounds like Pakistan is schizophrenic. You can't be supporting the Taliban and supporting the US at the same time. It makes no sense. So let me tell you for the benefit of your audience, Pakistan supported the US and the international presence. Uh, the US uh, leaders are on record saying that no other country helped more in wiping out Al-Qaeda than Pakistan. I've told you how many losses. Tell me, is there any other country that you know of that has had 80,000 casualties for a war that wasn't of our making. So, you know, it's insulting to Pakistanis when people speak like this. We have worked with the US in the international community. Yes, we have been saying, we are the only ones speaking the truth and saying the strategy won't work. Uh, in Afghanistan, the graveyard of empires, in this context, you can't win militarily. Yes, we were saying that, not because we were disingenuous, but because we were telling a partner, a friend, that what you are trying to achieve is not achievable. There's another way to do that, and that's political. So it's not about supporting the Taliban or not. What we are saying now is a very simple thing. There is a reality on the ground. We didn't ask the Afghan army not to fight. We didn't ask Ashraf Ghani to flee the country with cash in hand. We were the ones who were supporting a politically negotiated settlement between Ashraf Ghani's government and the Taliban. We were instrumental in helping start the Doha process, but the US was negotiating. We didn't strike the deal that the US did with the Taliban. Now, now that they've taken over the country, uh, there is a reality. And if the world does not engage with Afghanistan for the sake of the average Afghan, 
then what we are really saying is we don't care about a governance collapse, we don't care about a humanitarian crisis, and we don't care about a security vacuum. If that's where we want to go, then we are repeating the mistakes of the 90s. So we are not saying support the Taliban or not. We are saying engage the government whenever it comes about, immediately talk about how to ensure what we are saying. Inclusive government, moderate government, human rights respected, no terrorism from Afghan soil, and non-interference by everybody in Afghanistan. This is what the world is saying. This is what the US is saying. So if that's true, how are we going to get there without engaging with the ground reality? And let me also tell you mm. this conversation about whether one should engage or not. The US was engaged with the Taliban for two years in Doha. The entire world was. Everybody was engaged with the Taliban. In fact, now we know that the Taliban was supporting the US in getting a safe passage to the airport. So use the same channel. Let's talk. Let's influence. Let's make sure that it's a, a government that's acceptable. And then we incentivize uh, the ground reality to make sure that there is real governance that provides food on the table for the Afghans. And the Afghans don't feel abandoned again uh, like they were in the 1990s. If that hadn't happened, the world would have been very different today. So let's not make the same mistake again. That's all we are saying. And that's all the entire region is saying, because again, it's a luxury for the West when we talk about migration problem, terrorism problem. For Pakistan, it's an existential issue. For all the neighbors, it's an existential issue. And that's why we can't afford to be talking about abandonment. In any case, it'll be unethical and immoral. After 20 years of engagement by the world, you just turn your back again. Mm. Uh, I think then nothing could be worse. Mm. I think, Moe, the concern is, though, that it's going to be very hard to get any kind of peace dialogue, given the current situation on the ground, that is Afghan-led, Afghan-owned. What are the prospects for that? And does Pakistan also have a role to play here as an actor in the region and as an active participant in this process? Every country has a role. That's the point. It shouldn't be one country and not others, two country and not, uh, countries and not others. Everybody has a role. Everybody has a responsibility. And, you know, if we want to take the, uh, the new government, the new reality in a certain direction, you tell me, is there any way to do that except engaging? Because if the world isolates uh, Afghanistan again, well, then they will do whatever they can with no money and no governance capacity. So I think there has to be some help uh, provided, some incentive provided to make sure things move in the right direction. I have to say that the initial uh, statements by the Taliban, the initial conversation uh, is not like the 90s at all. They're talking about wanting legitimacy, wanting assistance. They're talking about uh, letting everybody be. Uh, they've talked about letting the religious minorities um, you know, practice their faith. Women have been asked to come back to offices. I'm not here to defend anybody. All I'm saying is there's an opportunity, it seems, and we need to cash in on that opportunity uh, rather than just look at political expediency and, and turn our back again. Uh, now, the question, frankly, is less about a peace process and more about inclusion in an Afghan-only dialogue where all ethnic groups are included in the government and in the conversation. That's for the Afghans to do. But again, the more we can, um, outside world can use incentives and use leverage uh, to ensure that, the better right. for everybody. Right. Moe, just quickly before we let you go, where does this situation leave Pakistan from a national security perspective today? Because the great concern is that the forces of Islamic radicalism are going to be emboldened as a result of this. That could have a serious spillover effect for you and the wider region. Your thoughts? I think that's correct. And that happened in the 90s. And as I told you, Pakistan suffered tremendously. Um, this, if there is a security vacuum, it will be filled by undesirable elements, whoever they may be. Uh, in fact, in the 90s, when that happened, we also saw Al-Qaeda take root, and then 9-11 happened. I'm not for a second suggesting that's where things will go, God forbid. But what I am saying is, why do we want to risk a major migration outflow and a security vacuum? Because these things don't recognize borders. It won't be contained to Pakistan, trust me. And the entire world will be affected. And if that's true, let's do the smart thing. Let's engage. Let's make sure we don't get there. Look, Afghans are not commodities. They're human beings. Millions are refugees already. Rather than we talking about another refugee crisis, another security crisis, let's ensure we prevent them. We have the opportunity. Let's work together as the international community. Let's not divide this. 
uh, and help make sure that things move in the direction they do, because there is a political reality on the ground. There's no point closing our eyes to it. We, it's not of our making, it's not of your making, it has happened. It has happened because of failures inside Afghanistan and an unsustainable policy, a corrupt government, an illegitimate uh, governance model, but that's done. Let's not cover those right. mistakes that the international presence has made just by turning our back. Let's do the right thing by engaging and finding a way which is stable and prosperous for Afghanistan.